It's Tuesday, October 23rd. 60-year-old Father Kuryakos Kattutara priested the Jalandir Diocese, the man who had given a statement to the police against Bishop Franco Mulakal in the non-rape case, was found dead in his room on Monday. Father Kuryakos, the News Minute reports, was to be a prosecution witness in the case. The family of the priest say they suspect foul play. His brother Joe Skatutara told Matrabhumi he is suspicious of the death. He alleged his brother had been killed for giving a statement against Franco Mulakal. Father Kuryakos had been frequently threatened by church officials. He also revealed that Father Kuryakos had said his life was under threat. Anupama, one of the sisters who had resorted to public protest to demand Mulakal's arrest for the alleged rape, also expressed doubts over Father Katutara's death. She said he died under mysterious circumstances. He told the media and many of us that his life was in danger. He was a prime witness in the case against Bishop Mulakal. He stood with us when we began our fight against him. Franco Mulakal, who was released on bail last week, was received with flower petals and garlands in Jalandhar. Kashmiri separatists will today march towards Lal Chowk in Srinagar and stage a sit-in to protest the killing of seven civilians in Kulgam district in a blast at an encounter site on Sunday. This comes after Monday's complete shutdown in the valley. Explaining the civilian deaths on Sunday, some reports quoted security officials as saying, locals rushed to the encounter site despite appeals not to till such time that the bomb disposal squad sanitizes the area. An unexploded shell is believed to have gone off, causing the fatalities. The Jammu and Kashmir police expressed regret for the loss of civilian lives at the encounter site, but stressed that such sites should be avoided till properly sanitized. Meanwhile, just concluded municipal elections saw a dismal 4.8% turnout in the valley. Before this, the 2017 by-elections to the Lok Sabha saw a turnout of only 7%. Kashmir watchers say this is the worst election turnout since 1989. A poll boycott by key Kashmir parties, PDP and the National Conference, and a poll process that was shouted in secrecy, with even names of candidates being revealed only on the date of voting, fearing violence, have given rise to questions on the credibility of the democratic process. Days after confirming that his government had indeed approached the International Monetary Fund for a bailout, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan suggested help from the global lender may not be required after all, as he had received, quote, positive responses from some friendly countries. Pakistani media reports say the friendly countries are China and Saudi Arabia. The Imran Khan government's mixed messages on the IMF bailout have reportedly much to do with the IMF chief setting a precondition that they would need absolute transparency on Pakistan's debts including those owed to China. The exact terms of debts Pakistan will owe China under the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, a flagship project of China's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, have been unclear. Under the CPEC, China has pledged financing to build roads, boats, railways and other infrastructure in Pakistan. China has now emerged as the chief source of external funds for Pakistan over the United States. Reuters reports that the United States has criticized China's infrastructure lending, warning that it has saddled some developing countries with debts that they cannot afford to repay. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said there would be no rationale for an IMF bailout of Pakistan that pays off Chinese loans. Countries like Sri Lanka and Malaysia are already reconsidering their Chinese financed projects. Top consulting firm McKinsey & Company is in the dock after a New York Times report revealed how Saudi Arabia used one of their reports to identify and systematically silence Twitter dissenters. McKinsey's nine-page report on the public reception to Saudi Arabia's 2015 austerity measures to offset low oil prices and control a widening budget gap found that the policies received twice as much traction on social media as compared to traditional news, and that negative sentiment far outweighed positive reactions. It also named three individuals at the center of the conversation. Writer Khalid al-Alkami, 
Canadian Mr. Abdul Aziz and an anonymous user Ahmed. Consequently, all three were arrested or silenced by the Saudi government. McKinsey in an official statement said the report was an internal document, not compiled for any government, and that it was, quote, horrified the report had been misused. And finally, if there was a guide on what not to do as a public figure, right on top would probably be, don't cross the safety range on a cruise ship to take a selfie. About exactly what Amrita Fadnavis, the wife of Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis, did on board Angria, India's first domestic cruise that left docks for its inaugural run this weekend. Mrs. Fadnavis was even cautioned by security personnel to quit her titanic moment but chose to first take a selfie. Remember, according to a 2016 report, India leads in the number of global selfie deaths. 128 of a total recorded 213 global selfie deaths from 2014 to 2018 have been in India. Remember self before selfie. See you tomorrow.